Hello, hello. We are back with another episode of the RIN. We're on that 44, like oh, episode 44. Hey, man, I'm so excited to be here. I actually missed this past week on Tuesdays. Uh, but obviously, you know, Cernok, Tim, and Leroy took care of things while I was away. And it uh, sounded like they had a better show than when I was here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I must say, Cernok is one heck of a substitute teacher. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. No yes. spit wads are, were in the, the – you know, No, he let thing. us do our homework. Me and Tim had homework to do. He let us yeah. do our homework, and he ran the class. Wait, wait, hey, look, don't don't let out that because that's going to be a little breaking news coming soon. So don't let that out just yet. We do want to make mention, and I am so I want to go ahead and just to straight up apologize to these people. We are so thankful for our channel members, and I am so sorry I have not put this on the past two videos, but you know we love you, all you guys that are in there. Uh, As cats, simply shenanigans, Diane Matthews. Uh, Leroy, Blood, Sweat, and Cell, Trash Cat Rescue, Kristen, we thank you for being here, Lissette, New England, Betty Boop, and Joe Deals, Old School Picker, Chris, Vintage Sports Flip, Keith, and Charities, Terrific, Fines, Fines. and Kathleen, the Firmway Flipper, and last but definitely not least, a brand new channel member this week, Mr. Kent Daigle, Mr. Google himself. Guys, if you need a link to something in your store, Kent is your man. Uh, something for a small can, fee. Hey, I cannot find this. He's your guy. Like he 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 is like Mister Google. I think secretly he invented Google. I've never met Kent in per person, but I think he works for those guys or something because he's the fastest link in the business. So we do thank each and every one of you guys for being our channel members. We actually have exciting news as well this past week. We did our first channel membership only live. And for you guys, those of you guys that were there, man, we had an awesome time. Uh, we definitely enjoyed the questions and the interactions we had with you that were there. And if you weren't there, hey, there's a way to remedy that. We're going to do another one uh, coming soon. We'll, we'll definitely update you with that. And go on and jump in, join the membership. If you want to, no one's going to come to your house, knock on your door and say, hey, you better join or else. Uh, we're not going to kick you out of our live stream that we do on Tuesdays, and we're not going to prevent you from watching the IRA in, in the future. But uh, you can come and be a part uh, and come and ask questions and come and share your stories or whatever you want uh, help with. We will do our best to help you in that. We did want to go ahead and make a mention of a couple of comments we got um, the, over the past week or so. We looked at a few things, you know, first of all, last week we had on list perfectly. And one of the comments that it had came in was, are there linked to Kittizen? And actually list perfectly came in to our chat and actually answered that question and said, Hey, uh, list perfectly is linked and integrated fully with Kittizen. Someone else uh, actually sent some prayers my way. Um, unfortunately, this was from a long time ago uh, when we actually had something unexpected to come up where we weren't able to do the live stream that day. So uh, Kathleen, the Fern Fernway Flipper says, sorry, I missed it, guys. Hope to catch the next one. She's talking about that members only live stream. And then, man, we had something crazy happen this, this week that I did want to make mention of before we go any further and just talk about a little bit of breaking news. Yes. Man, that gets me so pumped up. <laughs> this past week, guys, if you have not seen the video, uh, someone actually put a comment in our uh, comment section talking about the connection strikes again. Is what they said. The connection strikes again. Guys, my guys put out a video, Cernok and Tim, about an amazing experience, like something that we actually, it's kind of like, you know, some people have their things they want to find at a yard sale. We actually challenge each other all the time. Can you buy a hat off someone's head? Can you do it? Like, and honestly, there's times where you see a hat out there that you're like, dude, I not do it. I, I've got to do it because it, it's a great guys. If you have not seen this video, 
uh, we spread it across the whole uh, RIN network am among all of us. In breaking news, I mean, probably one of the most hated TikTok videos out right now. <laughs> uh, you, can <laughs> you know, resellers are the scum of the earth. We all know. Welcome to the club. We got it. But honestly, all we're doing, guys, is we're upcycling. We're, we're taking something that probably would end up in a trash heap, and we are actually upcycling it to someone who actually wants it. So go check out Cernox Connections video. It's on a bunch of different forms of social media. The, yeah. On the RIN, it's on Cernox's channel, it's on Tim's channel. Uh, Leroy, did you drop it on your channel? or oh. <laughs> I put it on my channel. Like, it's on the RIN YouTube. Like, you can see it pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Uh, the also other breaking news is our very own over the years has rejoined the YouTube community from a personal content creation basis. He has a great video about talking about why, uh, you know, we're going to get him to talk a little bit later, man. I, it's so good to have you back, Tim. Uh, Tim has actually inspired me to like, Hey, OBX picker has just got some dust gathered up over there. So we need to knock the dust off that thing and get back on track. And even Leroy, Leroy, <laughs> Is now a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you say it too. It just makes it seem so so controversial and scandalous. Yes, he's a YouTuber. Yeah, because you know why? Because we're resellers, right? <laughs> yeah. Resellers can't be YouTubers, apparently, or vice versa. <laughs> like, but we we actually it does exist. They coexist. They join together hand in hand. Uh, you know, resellers and YouTubers. Uh, it's one of those things. You don't actually have to. Here's the other thing about it. You can put out as little or as much as you want. And as a reseller, you can do as little or as much as you want. I don't pay your bills. You don't pay my bills. We're all happy about that, right? I'm glad I don't have to pay y'all's bills. And I don't have to pay, <laughs> have to pay my yeah, bills. You guys should be yeah. very, very happy that you don't have to pay <laughs> so a, and, and, uh, and I've and raised I do, your daughters I, already. I've paid enough bills over the years. I, I do have to put out a disclaimer. Um, I did ask for a copyright before I did my video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's retained some lawyers. We're in negotiations. We're going to see how we can get this worked out. But, uh, hey, today we do have an exciting episode with you guys. Uh, stick around because we're going to jump right in on to this 101 with Leroy. And he's going to be talking about the benefits of bulk buy. Stick around. <laughs> get him in here what's going on guys all right it's going to be story time slash little show and tell on the internet so you guys all know we went to, you might have heard this story but i'm going to break it down a little bit so you guys know we went to the 127 and uh we you know we go to a bunch of different sales and i do tools i do do hardware um i don't do like car parts but i'll do like one more parts and stuff like that but i know a friend of mine, which is Eric, has done a boatload and a <laughs> not, no pun intended, a boatload of parts. And um, so I was with Eric. Eric was on the other side, and I ran over to him like, "Run!" Like you would have thought something was happening. I was like, "I need you, and I need you now." But I me thought he had an emergency going on. I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Dude, what's going but, on?" But, but me and Eric had to understand it. I didn't like yell at him and grab him. I was just like, "Hey, I need you as soon as I can." Um, I need you to come with me. And I brought Eric over. He looked at it. And guys, so what it was, was there was a, there was a, 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 a pallet on the ground. And there was probably, he had about 20 of these out, right? And he had a tag on them that said $65 each. And if you see all those little trays are in it, this is the big box. This is the big box from Lowe's. So they were full with parts, full. And I already tried to get the price down a little bit. He wanted $65 a box. Um, and I got him down to 50, I believe. Um, went up and got Eric. Eric came back and I said, um, I said, Eric, I got him. At, I, I explained to Eric what was going on. I got him down to 50. Eric said, listen, if we buy five or six boxes, what what's what could you do? And I, I think Eric shot him at like thirty five. I think Eric was like, right. Yeah, I literally think Eric, right. Yeah, I, I think, think I said Eric thirty was, actually. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, no, I can't do that. So um, Eric, 
helped with the the negotiation, and we got them for we got them for um, forty five, right? Forty five dollars a box. So Eric bought two boxes. I bought two boxes. We also got um, um, old school flipper to Chris to get a box. Old Chris got old box. Old school picker. Old school picker. Yeah. So he had got a box as well. So that all being said, um, I, I spent the time, it took me a little bit of time to list these parts. Some of them are worth a lot of money. Some of them are worth like eight bucks. And the meaning of this, guys, is what you don't be afraid when it's that much stuff. Just say, hey, you know what? This one week, I'm just going to do parts. Do it once and get it done with. So I'm going to pull up some of my solds, guys, to just show you what, I, what I've what i sold so far. Um, and it's just a few that are going to pop up. And while you're, while you're doing that, let, let's let everybody know, too, that the most important thing of this whole you know conversation outside of buying in the bulk and Leroy is going to show you the sales is you listed every, every single part from that bulk buy pretty much, right? Yeah, on 158 pieces. So, so you know, like when you buy those bulk buys, it's so tempting to just grab the ones that are worth the most amount of money and list no. those first. But it's important to just get everything listed from the bulk buy, get it up there. It'll generate the traffic, too, because you have all those sort of similar listings going up at the same time. And you can see Leroy's already, you know, started bringing in the cha-chings with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, I don't know what the stuff is. It's the, some of this is Toro stuff. You know that you got twenty dollar, fifteen dollar. Uh, I think I sold that one for fifty five. It has a line through it. Um, eight dollars, twelve dollars, eighteen, thirty. A gas cap, which I have five of those for twenty five dollars. Um, the the uh, meter, the change the meter, sixty five dollars. A pulley wheel. $25. These little uh, stud, left stud, whatever they are, $29. An ignition switch, $59. A brake pad, $25. A little cap for the wheel, $30. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the lever for um, for the, for the um, throttle, throttle, $55. Now, Eric knows the box that I took has about 15 of those in it. I've only li I've sold two already. Uh, one was thirty five, and I think this one was. And the rest of them are not mine. Um, but what what we wanted to do was explain that when you see this stuff, I'm so happy I did it. Me and Eric once a week talk about why we should have bought more. We do know who bought the rest of them. That's for another story. I do want to jump in really quick about how did I inventory them. What I did was I spent a little bit of money. Can you put me back on the big screen? <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I spent a little bit of money, and I, I had these boxes, and I bought 250 of these envelopes. And everyone has, you know, you've seen other people with clothes do it this way, or they all have the numbers on the top, so I can just flip the top and find the numbers. Now, in this in this it might be a little nut it might just be like one little thing this one has some purpose but i and this i have on there there's three of them in there so they're all single and then what i'll do is if it's just one piece in it i'll take it i'll cut it in half put tape on it boop, and i ship it right in that package and i have this for something else so i needed these to to um to control my inventory so I inventoried it correctly. That's why I really bought these. But then I'm double dipping and using them to ship as well. Aha. So, so, so once if I pull it out and it, I just take it and I, I'll, I'll put a paper tape over the back of it and I'll ship it out in that, um, which, which for me helps, helps me so I can, um, so so I can make sure that it's all. It's all, you know, not, I'm not going to lose it. So that's, I just wanted to show you guys quick um, how, how when you buy bulk buys. I bought one today. I bought a bulk buy today. Um, it was 
it was um, 200 packages of DeWalt um, bits. Uh, some of them a half inch and some of them are five sixteenths. Um, they're, you know, for, for a drill gun. Not everybody has drill guns and those bits, they're magnetic. Um, I bought the whole box for 50. If I looked at it that way, I'm selling uh, 25 lots at um, at $12 a piece. And I'm the only one in the market. But what I do when it comes to a bulk buy like that, when there's only two items, but I have over 100 of each one, I will do four different listings. Mm -hmm. So I'll do one listing of 10, and it will say DeWalt Bits, replacement, nice, and it will be on a blue background. Then I'll take and I'll put it on a white background, same item, and I'll do bits for a drill, DeWalt magnet, and and I'll do maybe six of them instead of three. And and it's it's the same product coming from the same person, but I'm splitting them up a little bit, and I'm changing the background a little bit, and I fill out every even with these parts. It took me a hot minute, but I the reason why they're selling like hotcakes. I've listed a hundred and a hundred and uh, fifty six or something like that, and I've sold already sixty five. And the reason is, is because I filled out the item specifics. I have a friend, he's not on this panel. Well, I think he's on this panel, but he, he's showed me about the lightning bolt. And I've learned um, to, even if, even if it's the, I would used to do just NA and then it would say type and I just put part or it will say color and I'll say blue. It will say size. And I'll say, um, I'll put the model number of the, of the, of the uh, whatever it is, so so when you when you're doing bulk, like don't be afraid to. Yes, I have one item and I have a hundred of these. Make six listings that have thirty in each listing, and change that listing a little bit. Um, I've been doing very well doing that, and I discussed it with the boys, and they said, you know what, maybe you should do a little segment on that. So that's my one hundred and one for the day, guys. Is Pay attention to your bulk stuff. Not saying I'm a bulk expert. Um, most people would do one. I do a bunch of pitches as well. Uh, my friend Eric does like a half a pitcher, I think. I do like seven pitches for each item with the tape measure and everything else. Um, it takes me a little bit of time, but the stuff will sell. So thanks, guys, for listening. I hope I was able to teach you a little bit of something here on the one-on-one about bulk buying, how Leroy uh, bulk buys, and back to you guys. So, Leroy, I like one of the things for me, I mean, because obviously we do have a little different approach about things occasionally. <laughs> we all do. And that's what makes us, uh, you know, because like we've said all along, there's more than one way to do the, these things. So, like how, obviously, this is something we always have to look at, especially if, if you're just starting out. But it's also a good business practice, period. How long before you got your money back? Um. So I had it all listed in about 15 days. Okay. Um, I had it all listed in about 15 days. Um, and I got my money. I was $90. I was all in at $90. Um, and I got my money back probably in about four days. Yeah. Um, at, and so far, it's prob there's probably, I haven't sold anything for $90. But I've sold probably, probably, um, I would say maybe, um, I would say maybe about six over fifty. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it it's it's a bunch. I don't know. Yeah, you exactly. just you just in what you showed us that were that were like it's probably four or five in there over fifty bucks for sure. Over fifty bucks, yeah. I the most expensive was was uh, one for like sixty. But to answer your question, yeah, um, about four days it took yeah. me to get my money back. Um, and now I'm I'm saying to myself, wow, like. But you also, guys, you have to realize something. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Like I. Um, Brandon, his name is, he bought the other stuff. He's going to be eating that stuff for a long time. Once my 
200 pieces, 160 pieces are gone. I made my money. I can't be sad about it. Like, don't be sad. Yeah. Move on to the next thing. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you guys, because, like, the reason Leroy talked to me about parts, particularly because one of my early big buys, actually, I've done several big bulk buys right out of the gate. Like, I, I did a Radio Shack buyout mm -hmm. pretty much. I did a, that was my latest, later one. The first one I did, I did v, uh, videos, like DVDs that were all um, series. They were all box sets. And I did them. And those, I did exactly what Leroy said. I just like hammered them, like knocked them out. Two days, I'm done. Uh, they're all listed. And I, I honestly, within two or three days, I had all my money back. I'd already doubled up. I'd already tripled up. You know, I started yeah. rolling through it. The the set that I did that took the longest, and you guys, like, if y'all go way back on OBX Picker channel, you'll see us doing listing and loafing. And there, I mean, it, what for what felt like months, every day I'm cranking out boat parts back in the day. Like, yeah. I'm not like, because I That's how I met you. And Polaris. And, dude, like, we would set and do a listing session. I was like, yeah, guys, I put up 55. Like, because I'm just cranking through those things. And, okay, so that was pretty near three years ago. You know what I sell almost every day consistently? Even now, I'm I'm finally down to, uh, if you guys know what a tomato box is, it's like, you know, like a small banker's box, essentially. And uh, I'm finally down to six boxes of those. I started out and I loaded my minivan twice with boxes of those. Wow. So wow. for three years and spending 500 bucks... I've made money since week one on those parts till now. Like in, yeah. in the sort of stuff I sell, like Leroy knows because he's an advocate of this as well. Some of that stuff may be 10, 12 bucks, but it doesn't matter because like it's all it's all profit. It's all mm -hmm. hitting the, the account and somebody's going to want it. The great thing about parts, parts isn't something you want. Parts is something you need. Yeah. That's why you buy parts. <laughs> so, yeah. Parts continue to sell. So it is something if you're out there, you know, it's, it's not the uh, it's not the exciting, most exciting thing to sell, um, you know, and it's not the most exciting thing to list. Leroy will tell you. But when the cha-ching continues to roll and you're like, oh, yeah, Joe's lawnmower shop needs a Toro, you know, whatever that weird thing. And is. that's who I get. That's who yes. I get. Absolutely. J, J and W repair. Um, yeah. S and P, S and P, small equipment. Those are the names. And you know the great I thing see. about I, I, I will just tell you this. Okay, so I've probably sold thousands of parts at this point. You know how many returns I've got on parts? Right. Maybe like two, three thousands of parts, and those one of the guy was a scammer, and the other two ordered the wrong number. Like they're like I thought it was the wrong number. Actually, one ordered the wrong number. One I listed wrong. To be honest, like that's what happened. So, like, for me, I, that's something to think about. So, guys, when you're out there, don't be afraid to launch out into something. Uh, I always say when you buy in bulk, one of the great things about it is you hedge your bets, right? So, like, you may lose on this piece, but, hey, dude, I made – you may have a piece in the box you didn't even know existed or what it even was, and it sells for way more. So, like, don't be don't be afraid to do it. Um, if you have any questions, dude, reach out to us. Like, uh, all these guys have done this at some point. And in other bulk things in, in a bulk situation, because if the price gets cheaper, it just does. Shout out Brandon <laughs> Reese King, though, because yeah. that dude is going to be the lawnmower king for a little while. <laughs> yeah, for South Carolina. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got so. and, 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 you know, um, like I said, guys, um, if it's an item, if it's a bulk buy and it's one item, it's the same item, but you have a hundred of them. Okay. Don't be afraid to change up the list and change the picture. Take one out of the package. Keep one in the package. Um, yeah. Don't be afraid to play around with it. You'll be so surprised that there's yeah. 40 of those things listed and you're selling all of yours and those are still listed. You know, spend a little bit more time because you run that market. Yep. That's it. All right. Look, we're going to go ahead and jump into the next thing. And, man, this is something that actually – we have a little RIN, little inner inner channel competition going on right now uh, concerning this topic. But uh, uh, you can go check that out as well. We'll be talking about it more. Uh, there's actually a live stream about it if you go back. But 
Uh, Tim's going to take us into what's trending. I'm literally doing something right now that we're going to talk about in this uh, segment right now. So, trending. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, football season is back. Back in full swing. Kicks off tonight. Uh, which will be yesterday, tomorrow. <laughs> that's that's a hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. yesterday, that's a, tomorrow. That's a matrix. That's a matrix. Uh, Jimism, twenty five forty four. All right. So yes, football season is back now. Soccer is worldwide probably the biggest sport in internationally, right? But NFL is the number one watch sport in America and is fastly growing overseas, obviously, as they play multiple games overseas every season now. So it's time to dust off those football items. It doesn't matter what they are. Football cards, clothes, hats, um, T-shirts, pennants, um, tchotchkes, whatever it is. I mean, it, this is kind of going to like bring the first segment of this segment together. I mean, Eric bought a whole... Uh, Lot of football, vintage football, like uh, ornament things, huggers. I have one on my shelf over here right now. So there it goes. Well, we can't oh, no, see no, it because no. you're on the green screen. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it, it's a perfect time for that. Now, obviously, throughout the season, as some teams do really well and some teams don't, you know, you'll, you'll see a swing as far as, you know, the demand for that sort of stuff goes. But uh, it's always something to, there you go, right there. It's always something to keep your eye out on, especially, you know, as you're outsourcing now, because that's something that if you source it on Saturday and you get it up on Sunday, it might sell on Sunday, the day of football. So yes. it's, it's, it's something that I think is also encouraging to push you towards actually getting your listings up that you picked up on Saturday, especially if it's football related, because the opportunity for it to sell is right there the next day, which is huge. So the other thing I want to talk about and what I was showing you just now is if you already have football listings, just delist them all. Delist mm -hmm. all of them. Every single football-related item you have right now, delist it. Okay? Go to www.photoroom.com on your computer. Sign up for the pro plan. Type in the code RIN and just AI generate all your football stuff. You can put it on a football field. You can put it in a locker room. Whatever it is that you know your mind takes you the direction wise, and it's gonna help you know with your listings. Right now, I'm literally taking a Super Bowl hat. I took it down. It had a white background, still in my store. I took it down. I'm putting it on a football field right now, and I'm adding it to my new listing. So it's just it. it what's trending? It kind of you, you're able to kind of do so many different things that we just talked about. We talked about bulk buying. A lot of times you can buy football stuff in bulk buys, bobbleheads, um, you know, small things like koozies, stuff like that, shirts, jerseys, pennants, hats. You know, you can get those. Get them listed because of the fact that it's trending, it's happening right now on Sunday. Like you'd be absolutely shocked how like if a team wins a game or a player plays a crazy game, how instantly the search traffic goes through the roof for that team, for that player. If something, if a guy goes out and breaks a record in the game, I guarantee you people are going in there searching their name. You know, obviously this is a little bit of a, of a touchy subject, but for example, when DeMar Hamlin had the incident and, and he almost passed away on, 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 on the field, his card had zero value. I mean, not zero value, but it was a low-end card. That card was selling for thousands of dollars that night into the next day. You know, when a guy in baseball goes out and he throws a no-hitter, his stuff goes through the roof the next day. In football, it's even more It's even more like instant because you have to think about it. There's only 17 games in a season. Basketball, hockey, baseball, those sort of things, you know, they have ex longer seasons. So, like, a one-game impact isn't necessarily as crazy as football. So, it's definitely a great opportunity here for you guys to also, you know, freshen up your stores, freshen up your listings, 
you know, getting involved with the AI generated backgrounds. Um, so it, I, I, for me, I thought this was a good trending thing, obviously, because it's something that I'm passionate about. But also it, 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 it correlates to a lot of these topics and subjects that we're talking about right now, today, whether it's refreshing your listings, buying in bulk. Cernok's going to be talking about jackets today. I mean, do you, do you know how much football jackets can sell for you? Come across a, a, a starter jacket of a football team you're in. You're in it to win it right there. So it's definitely something to um, keep an eye out on, and it, it definitely will push you to, to you know, be better at your reselling journey. Um, you know, obviously, if you guys don't know, I do have a football show on YouTube. I'm going to put a shameless plug in here. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, uh, Eric can uh, put a link for that in the description below. It's authentic in the beard on YouTube. Um, so yeah, we do we do a show, a live show, like four times a week now, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you're a reseller out there, and you or a YouTuber, or even a YouTubing reseller, and you have some stuff that's football related that you wanna. Donate it and, and and use that to help promote your eBay your store, your Instagram, your YouTube, whatever, your whatnot. Uh, give us a shout, and uh, we'll put together a little clip for you. We'll give it away to one of our viewers on the show and then uh, push that traffic to, towards uh, your eBay, your Instagram, your YouTube, your whatnot, whatever is working for you guys. So definitely football season is here. It's going to be around for the next, you know, 20-plus weeks. So it's an opportunity here to kind of – Get that stuff, dust it off, refresh those listings, source some new items, and uh, make some money. So that's what's trending uh, right now. Leroy has a question. Uh, I do think your Steelers will make the playoffs, yes. Possibly. No, it has Maybe. nothing to do with the playoffs. <laughs> I would steal us. So, so question. So now Deion Sanders does not play football. He is a coach. Yes. Has his card gone up last week? Absolutely. Did you see Every, that at all? Everything Deion Sanders, everything University of Colorado has gone through the roof. That's another thing, too. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about trending a lot of times here on, on you know, RIN, we talk about it's in relevancy to current events. That's the thing with reselling. I think I think we, we stress that a lot, and I think we should because it's so important, you know, like – it's it's a, a way of refreshing everything you do as a reseller because so many times as resellers we just get caught in the habit of buying picture listing move on to the next item but sometimes it's important to kind of look at what we do in a, in a sense of like day trading you know like you got to be aware of what's trending the seasons you know like I, something i think i'm gonna i've been trying to look into doing is finding a way to find statistical data on google searches so like what are people searching right now the most in google this week right if i am trying to find those sort of numbers and trying to figure out how can i incorporate that into my reselling business uh, i i think that that's something that hopefully i can get some more data on and and some information to bring back to to the community here but yeah it's it's super important i mean leroy mentioned it colorado buffaloes uh, University of Colorado Buffaloes did something last week that was insane, and it was the news coverage was all over the place. So people are seeing that they're searching that. It's it's just it's all it's all full circle. So one hundred percent, just remember that in in some sense of a, of the the fashion that we are like day traders, we're merchandise day traders. So it's important to to keep up with what's going on. And you said that you have a sports show. Yes, I do. Now you, you, you're a YouTuber on Sports Show. Does yes. that ruin football for everybody else because you are a YouTube talker <laughs> about sports? <laughs> I don't, don't and you know what's trending right now in NFL is the Chiefs Lions game. That's what's trending right now. Yeah. Uh, so it's a searches as of right this moment. So. So you can imagine, you. like, you got some Chiefs stuff, you got some Lions stuff. Like, imagine if the Lions go out there on national television tonight and beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Mm. Do you know how many people are going to be searching for Detroit Lions stuff? Like, especially you have to remember, like, teams that are bad, and that's not necessarily bad, but teams that are not, like, the upper echelon of, of the league, right? They're, they have fans. They have diehard fans, right? But then they also have fans that are, like, yeah, I'm a Detroit Lions fan, you know, and, and when something like that pops off, they're like, oh, I'm a Detroit Lions fan. 
But yeah. you know, it's been about 20 years since I bought a T-shirt, and let me find one right now. You know what? You, you, you bring up an e- interesting point. This year, you know what? You know what? Baseball hats I've sold the most of Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore Orioles yep. in past in past <laughs> years. Dude, I couldn't give away Baltimore. Let me tell Orioles you, stuff. it's so funny you say that because I will never forget when Cernok and I. This is way. This is back when Cernok and I were like first hanging out, and I was telling him about. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was down in Mod Duke's basement. Like basement, basement. Like this is like back then, and I was like, "Yeah, man, I got this dope Baltimore Orioles." He's like, "Man, that Orioles <laughs> not that tough to sell, man." <laughs> I'll never forget it because uh, when it sold, I messaged. I mean, it did take a long time, but when it sold, I messaged Sherlock and I said, "Ha, it's sold." But that is so true. I mean, it's it, but, it's yeah. I have I have no more Orioles stuff like right now. Like I blew through all of it this year since they're doing so well. It's crazy. It's very, yeah. very get yourself hip, man. You there's so many tools out there to use as resellers. You know, like let's let's start generating like that information for ourselves. You know, like some of this stuff is not gonna just be yeah. handed to you. By the time somebody makes a video about it and you watch the video and then you source it and list it and do all that. You're 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 a little bit you're too late. I'm not saying too late, but I mean you're gonna be at the back of the line. So you yeah. know sometimes you gotta take that initiative and just you know go out on a limb and do a little research. It goes a long way. Yeah, I just uh, I actually just relisted my Kansas City Chiefs jacket as we were talking. <laughs> so I was like, hey, uh, you of course we had to add the little, right? Yeah, we, we had to add because of your yeah, green screen. <laughs> Killing me, killing me. But, <laughs> but you had yeah, AI me, background, like, right? Yeah, definitely. You already know. <laughs> Photoroom.com. Use code R-I-N. There it is right there, buddy. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. From trash to cash. Old photo. <laughs> no photo. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. You had to make it part of the beard to make it stand out. Right. All right. So next up, definitely not last or least. Um, we're going to be talking about a deep dive into something else that's trending. The deep dive. Okay. So... We're talking about, you know, like trend. This kind of goes like into trending. Like right now, like where I sit and I, if I look at the weather, it's going to be 95 degrees today. So it <laughs> still feels like summer, but summer is going to be gone and w- fall winter is, is, is upon us. Okay. So what I always suggest, like beginning of September, which it is, start getting those jackets out and start listing jackets. Now you may say, Hey, Chris. I don't know anything about jackets. I don't even, like, you might be wearing a jacket. I don't even know what that style is called. So we're going to go through some, now these are going to be men's jackets because I sell predominantly men's, but it's kind of interchangeable as well. Um, But here are some different types of jackets slash coats, uh, styles that you'd be looking for. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of different brands, but if you know, like, you can find the tag and say, oh, this is Polo Ralph Lauren. Or, oh, this is Nautica. Or, oh, this is, you know, Carhartt. You know that, but you may not know what to type in there. You know, you, you like, oh, well, you might type in polo jacket and you're going to get 20,000 listings. But if you can narrow it down by, you know, your, your knowledge and go, okay, this is a blue, uh, a polo Ralph Lauren blue puffer jacket. Then, then it starts whittling it down. Then you can do the size and all that stuff. And it also is going to help you with, with like your vintage stuff too, because not always, not, you know, like a lot of times with your vintage, you're not selling it by the brand. Uh, you're selling it more by the style. Okay. Cause sometimes, you know, you might have a really cool jacket, but it, you know, and it's made in the USA. It's all cool, but it may, you know, it may have some kind of weird name to it that, a lot of people have never heard, but the style is still cool. So we're going to go through, through different types of jackets um, that I usually pick up 
Um, and I'm not saying you have, you know, don't go, you know, don't have to go run to the store and go, all right, I got to buy a bunch of jackets for jacket season. It's like, Hey, you come across them, you find them at a great deal, pick them up, you know, and they, they, they will sell. I I've already sold in the last two weeks, just leather jackets. I've sold like eight or nine leather jackets. Mm. So the, the, again, so we're going to go through these. Um, the first, oh, I didn't, man, I didn't even have my cool background. Look. <laughs> I had my cool background. Ready to Let's see. Add to it. Look, look, I had a cool background and everything. So it's okay. It's okay. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? How about this? We'll do, <laughs> we'll do it like this. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it like this. Now I like this on the side better. All right. So what we're going to do, go through the jackets. All right. So the first one we're going to look at is, you know, you're going to see a lot of these, but a lot of people don't know what these are. This is a, this is basically called, what what's it called a top coat or a uh, overcoat top coat overcoat okay this is it's 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 a it's a little more of that vintage style that nice designer style you know it lays over your jacket it lays over your big sweater you know usually it's only one or two buttons a lot of people get these confused with a like a blazer or like a or like a um, a, a suit jacket but no this is a this goes over it. it's a longer you know uh, i've picked up a few uh, nice ones like burberry makes nice ones uh you know there, there, there's a lot of different brands again if you know what I'm, what, I, what I'm trying to convey is if you know the style then you can look at the brand of it boom comp it and see you know if it's worth picking up this so, is the one leroy wears with a turtleneck and a gold chain when he goes to the jazz correct, nightclubs correct. Got yes, it. yes, Got yes. It. All right, so for the next one, now the, now this is a little bit a heavier coat. Okay, they call this a duffel coat. Okay, and I've picked up, a, I've actually picked up this brand right here, Gloverall. Uh, this is a great brand to pick. Uh, usually with your duffel coats, it's going to be a, it's going to be like really thick, really, uh, you know, like a wool, you know, like really thick. Uh, you know, you're going to have your toggles. That's what it's called, a toggle. So when he has, it may have a bone or a ring or a hook where, you know, it loops into, you know, that that's called a toggle hold. And a lot of these duffel coats are hooded as well. Um, it, it's a real, it's a real throwback to like uh, England, uh, but Gloverall, uh, they make great uh, jackets. I've, if you find this brand, if you even find this brand in this style of coat, I'd pick it up. These, every one of these I've picked up have gone over a hundred, probably around that in the, 125 to 150 dollar range um even for like the vintage stuff or not even like the newer stuff so a uh, really cool coat that's called a duffel coat and the and the 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 side the the, the fastening is called a toggle so those are some keywords you want to put in there anytime i see those toggles on a jacket i usually pick them up because the toggles some somehow people that that's trending right now it's trending it, that, that's trended over the last couple of years so I've done really well with that. All right, let's see. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this, this is this is your classic, classic um, trench coat. Okay, your trench coats. Uh, they have definitely made a comeback. Now is that Keanu I, Reeves? I, it it does, definitely looks like it. I will tell you though. I will tell you one brand I rarely pick up in trench coat is London Fog. Okay. If listen, I'll tell you this. If London Fog had re like crazy resale value i'd be i'd be uh, that's all i'll be all i'd be picking up because that's all i'd be finding so but you want in trench coats you want to look for the higher end brands um you know your vintage brands vintage burberry vintage uh ysl um yeah i mean they're, they're, there's there's different styles uh but you know they have, they have belts some don't have belts but you know trench coats are definitely making a comeback uh, so, you know, Hey, don't, don't be wary of them. All right. Here's one. I really like to sell. All right. We're going to move over. This, and I'm just pulling it from different brands. So you can see just like different brands, but P coats. Okay. P coats, especially vintage P coats, especially vintage, all wool P coats can do very well. Um, you may come across also with P coats, uh, you may come across vintage Navy pea coats, naval pea coats, and these th those can do very, very well. Um, you know, they're 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 
usually more heavy. They're usually double breasted. They usually have that notch sailor uh, cut collar. Uh, so, I mean, you can't go wrong picking up a strong, heavy peacoat, um, even for wearing. I mean, I, I, I remember back I in, love wearing a peacoat. It just, you know, it really brings out the yeah. pop in my beard in the wintertime. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's a great look. Little, little, dude, little peacoat beard and beanie action. You know what oh. I'm saying? I'm well, killing, you know, they, killing the hipster I'll, game right I'll, there. I'll, I'll, I'll style so, it. So it. Scarf? Do you go scarf peacoat? Or what? If it's really cool, you go scarf peacoat, beanie, maybe some jeans, and maybe some cool leather boots. See, hey, come down to Trox Connection. <laughs> Not only do I sell clothes, I'll style you. Even though I don't have much style, I'll style you right up, okay? But yeah, uh, naval so, peacoat. So, go ahead. So quick question. So if that's a peacoat, right? All of my jeans and shorts have a zipper. Are those considered pee pants and pee shorts? Because no. I can pee out of them. <laughs> no, it's P E A coat. P like the oh, like the, not like P -E. the P -E. Yeah, no, no. I thought it was P E E. I'm sorry. Right. We're moving on now. <laughs> <laughs> this this jacket. Now I've sold these before. These are called duster coats. Now these are a little bit different, a little bit you got you gotta think more like Western wear. Yeah, this like, guy, whoever's wearing this, you you better be careful what's underneath that jacket. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt Dillon. Matt Dillon. Yeah. No, but you, like like this is like that Australian <laughs> outfit. Like, but again, I have sold these. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people that work with horses like to wear like these style jackets in the winter because it keeps them protected. Usually, it's going to be made out of like a oil skin cotton. That's one of those things when you, if you feel some of these jackets and they feel, they may feel a little like greasy to you or they, they may have a funky like like waxy feel to them. That's because it's a wax cotton. It's not like I remember the first time I felt that I was like, ooh, what are the, what kind of what do they get on this jacket? <laughs> I'm like, oh, psych, this is a vintage uh, Bell Staff uh, oiled cotton biker vest or biker so when you jacket. when you do this because you know like it's when we're talking about these jackets right yeah so like you know like when you're listening on uh poshmark or depop right and they give you these sort of like categories as far yes. as stuff what would would you put this as like boho western uh gore tech where, where nah, we, this, no this, this is not gore core this is okay. uh this is this is more like yeah this is more western this is this is more like outdoorsy western type stuff yeah this is this would call fall under the category of like yeah so okay. is it mostly the top the top shoulders things that that are giving it this or is it yeah. the, the length with the buttons it, 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 it's it's a culmination of things the length the button the style the fabric and then those those duster sleeves or the shoulders mm -hmm. those a lot of a lot of times on these jackets you can they come off mm. they come off it's just it's just protection so all right let's get let's jump in the next one this is an all-time classic right here. All-time classic puffer, okay? Your your classic puffer, your classic Ralph Lauren or Polo Ralph Lauren, um, you know, your goose down puffer. Listen, goose down jackets do well. Your puffer jackets do well. The combination of a, a great brand and a puffer jacket will make it instantaneously. I'll tell you what, if I find, you know, Polo, Puffer jackets, even, you know, at retail arbitrage or even like at the thrift, I always pick them up because they always sell. Uh, but puffer jackets from a lot of different brands do very, very well. Um, now, the the one thing too, you'll see it says like down jacket. That's if it has, uh, you know, the the insulation, the down goose feathers insulation. So definitely look at your because some puffer jackets are just filled with polyester. Some are filled with a polyester mix with duck feathers and then some are like uh full like goose and duck feathers so make sure you look at the tag so you can kind of like get an idea of like what you have because some of these vintage jackets that are full of goose feathers do actually actually very well in resale so put your puffer jackets and also puffer vests so just think about the jacket without the sleeves puffer vests do very very well okay all right moving on to some a, a parka we're gonna do some parkas. Your big, big, uh, your big style parka. A lot of times they have like the fur, the faux fur. Now this is a 
triple fat goose. Remember, Eric, do you remember the triple fat goose from back in the day? They've actually made a I comeback. Do. It's actually made a comeback. And, uh, but you can find, you know, like, look, $625 for a little triple fat action. But a Jeez. lot of these bigger parkas, you know, again, that goose down, it may have that faux fur uh, around the collar. You know, these are your really large, big jackets. I always say, like, sometimes, you know, at your cheaper thrifts, man, sometimes, if you know, if you have a, a, a thrift shop that, you know, really doesn't pay attention to, like, like, they're not pricing everything individually. Sometimes, you know, your jackets are a lot more, you know, I pick, I pick up more jackets because the return is a lot better, like, on a jacket than maybe a pair of, or, like, you know, a, a sh just a re regular shirt or a pair of pair of jeans jackets is kind of like a staple for win fall or winter so s people are going to spend a little bit extra money on just a jacket themselves so you can definitely do better than that so yeah definitely parkas you want to be picking up another thing chore jackets and you know what brand slays them all when it comes to chore jackets carhartt okay yep. carhartt jackets and this is like the what is this the fourth fifth year in a row Carhartt, Carhartt, Carhartt. All my, all my wholesaling buddies, all my vintage wholesaling buddies are like Chris. Got any Carhartt? Got any Carhartt? Got any Carhartt? That's all they're asking for because Carhartt is all the craze right here. But this is a simple Carhartt ch chore co coat jacket. Uh, some, some are like blanket lined. Some are have the corduroy collar. Car, if you pick up Carhartt, take a look at it. Uh, vintage Carhartt does well. I will tell you something with Carhartt, especially vintage Carhartt. Do not worry about stains. Do not worry about the elbows coming apart. The distressed look for a Carhartt is a win. I've sold some distressed Carhartt jackets for more than clean, regular looking style jacket or Carhartt jackets. They a lot of a lot of people want that broke like like that broken in Carhartt look. Uh, kind of like with, kind of, I always think of, you know that it's that blue collar goes with like work boots. Do you show up the, on your first day to the job with brand new work boots and a new new Carhartt? If you do, yeah. you get blamed for it. You're like, oh, who's the new guy that just went to you know the store and bought you know brand new boots and brand new Carhartt? You a lot of these dudes want it already worn in, you know. So uh, definitely, you know, something. Other brands right now that are kind of like making a comeback uh, that that make more you know these chore style jackets. LL Bean. And even your older Dickies style stuff, I've seen an uptick in Dickies. Not the stuff that they sell at Walmart, but your older vintage Dickies stuff, especially the uh, you know chore jackets. The 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 Lee, the vintage Lee, yeah. the salvage wear. Yes, like yeah. the jacket I sold. Same mm -hmm. same sort of situation. Had some wear to it. Excuse me. Very similar color style to the the classic Carhartt yes. color, but workman jacket, chore jacket, uh, vintage, made in the USA. Sold for like 200 plus bucks. So, yes. Yeah, all, sort of all of your vintage workwear stuff right now is super hot, As, especially in the vintage category and in the reselling category. It's super hot right now. Vintage workwear. All right. Let's skip, skip to something a little bit newer, a little more. This is this is more of your like right here. This is more of your like Gorp course type style, uh, Tim, you're asking for. Uh, but this is kind of like Gorp Core light, you know what I'm saying? This is that, that you know, your your cool and your, um, you know, uh, REI type stuff, your Arcteryx. This uh, is your Packer, your this is like I seen these I seen these being worn on the HBO show Succession. Yes. So it's yes. like business people who go to meetings in like mountain areas. Correct. Like your, sort of stuff. Yeah. Your Patagonia, your all the. All these type style, like you know, though that that's that kind of like that. It's a it's a thinner. It's not as heavy. It's not a parka, but it's it's thin. But it has a lot of attribute attributes. It might you know, it might have a windstopper like some like Gore Tex or you know, it, it, it you know, it, it might have the Prima Loft. But like it's more you know, you got the you got like the hidden pockets or the or the you know that that's where it all comes in that Gore Core type style. You know, where the hidden pockets light kind of like very fashionable, maybe interchangeable as well. You might have one layer or three in one, something like that. So uh, definitely be looking at that, that, like stuff like this, cool Patagonia, uh, Arcteryx, brands like that. 
um, are, are, are doing well uh, right now. So, all right. Next up. Now, this is kind of like a blend of like a parka and what I just showed. Okay. So these are more what they're, what they're calling like raincoats and stuff like, like a, but you have a, a bunch of different raincoats, but this is like that, that winter raincoat. It's going to have a hood. It's going to be maybe uh, more of a nylon or more of a wax cotton because your wax cotton stuff is more built for outdoor weather. Your nylon, your polyesters uh, are built more for that as well. Uh, so, you know, stuff like that, multi pockets. Again, it's you think about hiking, you're thinking about outdoors. So the more pockets, the more hoods, the more little hits it has, the better it's going to do for you as well. Uh, all right, let's jump to this one. Now, this one's This easy. is really good. I've seen this one. Listen, blazers, classic blazers right now are, are making a comeback. Uh, things, that, things that may just jump out more, more colors, that seersucker, something different. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you're going to the thrift store and you're going to find your old man, you know, your old man blazers. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm, talking, I'm talking about more like this light cottony style. Think about like east, east, uh, eastern seaboard coast, uh, you know, preppy look. This is this is kind of like that, you know, that this is that Connecticut. This is that Maryland. This is a little Rhode Island. Whoa, vibe whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not throw Maryland in, in with Connecticut. Okay? Well, I'm, I'm not talking about like that Georgetown uh, part <laughs> that of Maryland. Maryland. That Chevy Chase, huh? Yeah, that Chevy Chase. Yeah, area, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm, not, I'm not talking about like Eastern Shore, you know, like down there. <laughs> But Since yeah, they're not, when you say classic, like you're looking for two button, not four button. Right? Yeah, you're looking for that yeah. Yeah, little bit lighter two button, that notch collar, little pocket. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be lighter, you know. You're not gonna. This is not, you know. Think about going to the coast or going to, you know, in in the fall rather than going to a funeral. You know what I'm saying? That, that's yeah. what you that's what you want to think about. All right. Um, now this. This is something that I have, uh, I've picked up a few of. Now, this again, this is going to help you with some words. Um, you know, these big kind of coats, like longer, like so. You're thinking about like, hey, I'm thinking about. Well, it's not a trench coat, and it's not a duffel, and it's like this. They call this a. Um, that they're they're calling these a Lauren coat. Again, this is more of an English type sportsman look. Peaky blinders keyword. Yeah, peaky can I go blind peaky yes. blinders? Yes. yes. Thomas yes. Shelby. There we go. Yeah, peaky blinders, loading coat, heavy wool. Uh, it's got the. It's it's probably got like the the braided leather buttons and everything like that. Uh, think about again. Think about that that England that ruggedness that you know these are these are made a little bit more extra warm, a little more heavy weight. Uh, but I've de definitely done this. Loading wool, uh, overcoat, you know, th these are all things that you can use uh, in your... Uh, How in about your knee toucher? Knee toucher. Knee toucher, yeah. Do I have to have a sharp jawbone or cheekbones in order to wear this jacket? Well, it, it, it definitely helps out. It definitely okay. helps out if, if, if you do. Okay? I don't have the same jawbone structure that I once had when I was, you know, I looked like this guy. <laughs> but He I doesn't mean, look like a problem. <laughs> he doesn't look like a problem. He's got if leather you gloves I, on, dude. He's a problem. Yeah. 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 But if you, if you, if, if, if you I wore an overcoat work. into a place of business, or Leroy yes. did, you know, we're probably going to yes. be get the get on the ground. <laughs> No. <laughs> right, right. All right, it's just some bum off the street. That's what they'd say. <laughs> I mean, this guy. I mean, oh, here we go. All right, now next, this is your bombers. Okay, so so a lot of people they're like, what? what it, all right, a bomber jacket is almost like what's a trucker hat, almost. Okay, because you there's there's different styles. There's military bombers. There's fashion bombers. There's actually you know like. Letterman jackets. I even call those like bomber jackets in certain categories when you need to put it, put your jacket in a category. So take a look at these. These are uh, over the past couple of years. These have been definitely uh, trendy. Um, listen, your vintage military stuff does really, really well. Your Korean war, your Vietnam war type stuff does, does really, man, I'll tell you, or if you can even find a world war two bombers jacket, 
those could do insane. So think about that. Um, you know, take a look at it. It's got like the band collar, usually full zip, got the slant pockets. And sometimes it has like even like the the, the tactical pocket up um, on the arm. So some of these are reversible as well. I've, I've sold hundreds and hundreds of bomber jackets over, you know, over the years. So it, it's a great staple piece, especially like, you know, as a reseller or as even in your closet, it's a great, great staple piece. And then I was going to do denim jackets, but man, everyone and their mom has seen a denim blue jean jacket. So listen, if you don't know what a blue jean jacket is or what, you know, a denim jacket, what I'm talking about, just Google that. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, I know that. So I kind of like left that off the list because that, that, that to me, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you don't, if you don't know that it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't be picking up jackets, but <laughs> your, your denim jacket, you know, is a staple. So pick those up to, uh, you know, brands do well, like, uh, you know, Levi's, uh, vintage Levi's does well, but, uh, that, that, that I could do a whole topic on just denim jackets. So, uh, and then last but not least, we'll, we'll end it out with this. I, I, this is kind of like the most expensive jacket. I kind of don't want this to end. This has been extremely <laughs> like informative and fun. So, so this jacket goes a, a lot of different, like, like, um, uh, Kind of like I can go with like leather. Uh, let's just start with leather. Okay. Leather jackets do very well. Like I said, I've already sold like eight or nine leather jackets in the last two months. Okay. I've got more to list. So leather does well. Genuine leather. Now make sure you're looking at the tag because sometimes you can be like, well, hey, is this leather or is this poly, po, po, poly vinyl chloride, what they call PVC or polyurethane? It's, it's a faux leather. So check it, check it. Because you don't want to sell something and call it leather and they get it in and they're like, well, this isn't real leather. So make sure you're definitely checking that, checking the tags. Um, and you can also feel it too. Your leather is going to be a little bit, it's, it's going to have a, definitely a lot more weight to it. But some of the faux leathers are getting a lot better. So, but just uh, check the check the, uh, the tag on that. Uh, Sherpa line stuff, like Sherpa. This is like that, that kind of like that sheepskin looking, uh, you know, sometimes it has on the collar. Sometimes it's on the inside. You know, this does well. If you find any, any jacket that has like that Sherpa kind of look, definitely, I'm not saying buy it, but hey, inspect it. Take a look at, take what, you know, look at what brand it is. And, you know, it, it, you know, you may do well. Um, and then just like, you know, this, this look right here, this is the iconic look. This is a, this is a brand that, I'll tell you, put it on your list, SHOT, S-C-H-O-T-T. -T. Put this brand on your list. I'm not saying you're going to find it, but if you find it, this is a jacket that you may spend up on it. Because look at this, brand new. This jacket is worth over $1,000. Some of the vintage jackets, SHOT jackets that I have sold in the past, they have motorcycle jackets, they have the rancher style jacket. They, I've sold these for over $500 back in the past. So let so, me ask you a quick question while while we're on the leather. So you know, I'm, I, in my whenever I ask these questions, I'm thinking in my mind of what somebody who's just watching this and now they're trying to use yes. that information might like come across. So generally, I don't know if this is just my area or if this is you know a lot of areas, but generally in thrift stores specifically, if it's leather, feels like leather, looks like leather, they're generally like charging more than any other jacket on the yes. rack, right? Yes. So are there some things that you cuz you mentioned shop and you mentioned like this this sort of stuff about, you know, maybe spending up a little bit more money. Yeah, yeah there's some other tips to kind of like give you the i uh, you know separate you from this might be worth spending, you know, 15 to 25 dollars on versus this is not at all worth it. Like some brands that are like oversaturated, some that, you know, you might see a little bit more so often than shot, yes. but are, are not like, you know, like the cheap ones that you're not going to find a lot of profit value in like, and then are there any other sort of like design features that might uh, separate from like the generic leather jackets <laughs> that you see all the time? And uh, you know, some tips as far as that goes. And then also like Wilson, what about Wilson? Cause I've seen sometimes where people say Wilson sells good and other times Wilson is crap. What's the deal well, with Wilson leather jackets? I know that. And, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the thing too uh, about it. Um, you know, 
this could be an entire video. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why, I, like, as I was going on, I was like, "This is probably a loaded question." But if I could just have something to give them to help them a little bit when they're in the leather jacket section. Here, here's here's what my, my suggestion is: If you're gonna pay anything over fifteen dollars for a jacket, do your due diligence. Type, you know, type it in. Type in the brand. Type in all that stuff. Try to get a comp what you're comfortable with. Um, Yes, there, there are certain styles, you know, if you see, uh, you know, something made in the USA, uh, there, there's a certain style of motorcycle jacket. Um, I'll bring it up in a, in a bit. Like slippers um, and all that stuff on the motorcycle jackets. Yeah, your, yeah, your motorcycle jacket that has like the, the uh, I always call it the, 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 uh, the, the Marlon Brando uh, one. Uh, this is, this, I'll, I'll show it this one right here. Um, this one right here, uh, the Perfecto jacket. These, I I'll tell you what, these jackets right here have definitely become a staple uh, right now. This jacket right here. Can, you know, can we see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's got the belt. It's got the zippers. It's got the side zip. It's got the, you know, it's got all those things. This 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 jacket right here, if you find, you know, even, like, what, if you find a shot jacket like this, it's crazy money. I, this is one of those ones I sold for over $500. But just this style alone, it doesn't have to be shot, but just this style alone, uh, you know, this is called, I, I call this the, the cafe racer. This is a cafe racer uh, jacket. But I mean, you, you can see how it looks. Um, th this is a style that uh, I've definitely picked up in the past, uh, just different brands, because I know this style does very, very well. But, you know, you said, you, you know, with your simple uh, leather jackets, these are, you know, if, if you can get it cheap enough, that's what I'm usually saying. If you can usually get it cheap enough, if you're going to your thrift shop, that's your cheap thrift shop, not the one that, you know, not your, you know, some of the Goodwills that, you know, you go to Goodwill and every leather jacket's $39.99. I'm not talking about that. Now, I will still look in that, but I will look for, you know, certain brands. Now, if I see a Wilson branded for 40 bucks, I'm moving past it. Now, Shot is only, Shot is one of the, like, Shot... And some of the stuff in England that we, that that I, that I buy, it's like there's certain brands that will do well, but you just you just kind of have to know because you're not going to see it uh, very very often. You gotcha. know, uh, I'm talking about like Barber, like B A R B O U R, that brand Barber leather jacket. You know, you find something like that, yes, I'll pay forty dollars for. But again. I've, I've I've come across probably two barber jackets, leather barber jackets in my in my reselling lifetime. So it, it's one of those things. Where, but I always say, if you see it, be prepared to go. Yep, I'm buying that. You know, because someone else that knows is going to grab it. Even like if you found a shot, you know, Perfecto jacket. If you if you found one of those at the thrift for even fifty dollars, I, I would be picking it up. That's something that you know you're definitely gonna. Uh, you know, do so. We didn't get any of the sports stuff or the all that stuff because that that could, again, this could be a two. This this could be a multi multi. I'm just I'm just saying. Hey, these are the jacket styles you you're gonna be wanting to look for. Okay, and, and you know if that's something that you know you're in, you know you're buying clothes, you're doing clothes. Um, and also a lot of people ask me how do you take pictures. I usually flat lay. I usually find. I usually go and find other brands how they lay their jackets out so i'll type in uh you know toggle duffer or uh, not duff, uh you know I'll, I'll type in like glover all um you know duff, uh duffel coat and then i'll see how they lay it out you know you know how they do a flat lay of it and then when i do the my flat lay i try to mimic that style to kind of keep it and then we can do the picture do the removal ai backgrounds all that jazz through photo room and you know you know you can you can make it look very good but again i really didn't need to touch on military jackets sports jackets hey if you if y'all want to see more in-depth stuff like these on jackets especially during winter time just let us know down in the comments or that's something you know on our membership show you know, we can we can go a little bit deeper uh too so yeah you know it's interesting i just got a uh a notification from poshmark Today's trends, first down fits, Kansas City football team jerseys, Kansas City football team shirts, Kansas City football team sweatshirts, hoodies, and jackets. So yeah. 
They're they're listening. Yep. Yep. Google Trends as well is a good tool if you are looking for trending items. You Google can... Trends. Yep. You type just go to your main Google, type in Google Trends. You can get real time trends. You can get daily trends. Can you put like Google Trends tools? I'm sure you could. Yeah. What tool do you want to know is popular today, Leroy? I'm on it right now. Let's see. Let's see. The Shop Dyson Hair Tool is the most popular right now. Oh, I'll have to go out and get a couple of those. Cobalt Mini Toolbox. Snap-on Mini Toolbox. Wardle Solver Tool. I have no idea what that is, but it's pretty popular. Especially in Florida, Texas, New York, and California. Well, there we go. <laughs> All right. Anyway, hey, we do appreciate Cernock for taking the time to uh, deep dive. Yeah, into thank you. Jackets. I, 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 and that's a real that 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 was a real real that's deep a dive surface up scratcher. There. Yeah, we, we did an extensive. Right? So we may even cut that video and, and put it out uh, on its own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'll just tell you too because I do have some interactions. I'm not a thrifter by heart. Um, I, I do. I mean, I'm a treasure hunter everywhere. I don't really discriminate to a degree, but thrift stores for me, um, you know, have decreased in my business model over the years, but I do have a particular thrift store that I donate to often and check up on. And I have another friend of mine who actually owns a thrift store. Look, I'll just tell you, thrift stores don't have enough space to put out everything they have. So now is the time of the year where they're going to start changing summer to fall, winter. Yes. Um, so now's the time to go out and look for the jackets because they're like every other retailer. They're trying to get ahead and they're putting out items that are selling. Well, now, the other side of that is typically they'll reduce some of their summertime inventory. So don't forget about that as well. Uh, just a little tip for me on thrift store shopping with my limited knowledge and doing so yeah um, yeah because a lot of thrift stores hoard them too they'll hoard yeah. the jackets and then once that first hit of fall comes because my because i'm trying to convince i'm trying to convince my my local thrift shop to be like hey bring out those jackets they're like it's still hot outside i'm like okay i'll wait <laughs> yeah i'm always like too like I, one of the things i have talked to to thrift stores about is like you should be looking at the trends of the retailers. Yes. Like they're always ahead. So people are out looking for jackets now because that's what's in the stores. Um, so, yeah, it's a good time to do that. It's a good time for us to look for them as well because why? They're going to sell over the winter. Yep. Let's get cooler. Hey, we do appreciate each and every one of you guys for joining us today. And uh, hopefully you learned something. And if you didn't, man, just ask us a question of what you'd like to hear about, because we will definitely give you uh, the best knowledge that we can bring to you. Um, and if we don't know, we'll find out. That's how we work. <laughs> it might open up a topic that we can actually do a little research ourselves. I can tell you, if you come by on a Tuesday and you've got something you need to know about, there's not only us, but a ton of people that help us out on our Facebook group. You can join that. That's absolutely free. Um, it doesn't cost anything to come in there. You can drop questions, pictures, all that kind of stuff. However, I will forewarn you, uh, do not try to sell something on there because we will give you the <laughs> <whole> exit. <laughs> so, uh, just uh, one of those things. So come on by and check that out. Uh, guys, I'll let you guys uh, go through the exodus. All right. I'm kind of worn out of jackets. Uh, one thing we did mention <laughs> Follow us on Instagram too because we're always we're always posting kind of like things that we find, things that we're selling, things that are trending right now. Uh, like you know, we, we posted two of the items that I picked up yesterday. Uh, RA finds I found a couple of uh, a few uh, minor league baseball hats and a cool, some cool hoodie, a cool hoodie. So definitely follow us on Instagram because you'll you'll kind of see us, what we're picking and what we're selling as well. So uh, thank also thank you to all of our channel members. Uh, like, like, uh, Eric said, you know, we had a real, I, we had a really good, uh, members only, uh, stream the other night. Uh, it was, it was really, really good. So if, you, if you've been kind of on the fence, like thinking like, eh, should I be a member of this show? Hey, you know, you don't have to, but you know, there's a little added benefit to it. So yeah. Dude, can we get members only? 
R.I.N. jackets. Ooh. Members only jackets. I'm already ahead of the curve, guys. I've already got a. <laughs> yeah. I love me. Okay. <laughs> I do. I've got a slew of members only. And it's, and it's leather. And it's leather. I don't know that it'll fit me, though. It might be fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> Leroy. What is going on? So, guys, uh, I really appreciate um, you guys. Uh, Chris, your statement was awesome today. Um, Tim, yours as well. Eric, yours was a little lacking. Um, I think you can do a little bit better. I'm trying to pull up the slack next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I had to pick up the slack. I mean, I think I took 25 minutes today. So uh, I got a little excited. Um, but, you know, anytime uh, for any anybody who watches us, uh, if you guys think of a tool or see something, take a picture of it and send it to us and ask me questions about it. Um, I don't know everything. Um, I've had mostly a lot um, throughout the 20 years, but there's stuff that I still learn on. Um, there's stuff that I stay away from. Um, and maybe one day I will get into that of uh, tools that I stay away from that are worth good money. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate everybody and everybody who gave me support um, on the uh, Blood, Sweat, and Cell channel last week for putting out a video. I appreciate you guys and uh, the guys here. You guys, I uh, appreciate you guys as well. All right, Tim, take us out. <laughs> Big shout out to Cernok first and foremost. He he blessed me with this uh, Notre Dame hat, so had to shout had to shout out my boy Cernok. Yo, I, I even added the new I, the yellow the yellow snapback on that one. This is a one on one right here, baby. So big shout out to my guy Cernok. Love you, brother. Big shout out to my brothers. My brothers, Leroy, Eric, and Cernok, first and foremost, um, like I said, without RIN, without these three guys, these guys are literally like my older brothers. Without this, what we've built here, I don't know if I'd have been able to make it back into, you know, the groove of things. I don't know if I would have survived through all the troubles I've had. So, like, when I tell you from the bottom of my heart, these three dudes are like the realest dudes out there. I really 100% mean it. Big shout out to all of our viewers members big shout out to all the members you guys supporting what we do it means a lot it keeps us going it pushes us to be better at reselling it pushes us to be better at you know uh getting this information out to everybody for an opportunity to learn more uh, without all the love and all the support we wouldn't be able to continue to do what we do we want to thank you guys from the bottom of our heart uh we are working hard and hard and hard on all of these new items and new things that we're trying to bring to you guys to kind of you know keep this thing fresh keep this thing moving but without you you know we can't do it so make sure you guys are leaving the comments and questions below because when you guys ask questions not only do we help you we're learning too so it's super you know it's it, it helps us as much as it helps you and we really appreciate that so don't forget to hit the thumbs up don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share the video out. Check out us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of stuff going and we're super excited. It's going to be a really crazy. I don't use this term quite often, but it's going to be a wild Q4 incoming, ladies and gentlemen. But most importantly of all, don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend about R I N Reseller Information Network. Doo -doo.